What's up guys, welcome back to another Revit Tools video. In this video we'll be covering detail lines. They're pretty simple, you can find them in the annotation tab in detail lines right there. And now that we're in the detail line tool, I have the option of placing them. And looking at the top here, everything that involves the tool is going to show up in green. And I've got the different line types and different ways I can draw lines up here. I'll cover those very quickly in a second but I want to focus on line styles first because these are the types of lines that we have the option of drawing. I'm just in a basic out of the box template. So this is what you get. The, these are all different types of lines and unfortunately you can't tell what they are or how they, what they look like or anything right here from this view. But when we go into the settings, you can see that in just a second. So I've got lines, I've got one selected just, just by default. I can choose the chain option that's gonna be selected by default. I can have an offset, a radius. I'll show you that all right now. So I'm gonna draw a line and I'm just, as soon as I start drawing a line, I just need to choose a second place. And I can, I can hold shift to constrain in 90 degree angles like that. I can let that go and I can get any other angle that I want. I can also stop moving and choose a, a, a specific value that I want that line length to be. And based on the direction that the endpoint of the line is facing, that's gonna be the direction that the length goes. So if I want a line that's 20 feet long right here, I can type in 20, press enter, and there's my 20 foot line. And if I click on that line, I can see that the line style is lines, which I chose in the beginning. I can see that it's a detail line because I use the detail line tool that is checked and the length is 20. And I, as I push and pull and change that, you can see that the length updates live right there. So like before, I can change that line style right here or I can change it at the top right here. And that became a medium line, a thicker line. I'll change it to wide lines and you can see that that's a much thicker line than we had before. If I change it back to thin line, it's just that single pin weight right there. Right now, let's go and draw another one. I'll hit detail line or DL on my keyboard is the default shortcut. I can unchain, which means I just get one length and then I'm prompted to draw another line. I usually keep that on because I can stop drawing one line just by pressing escape. Not a, not a big deal there. The offset's kind of nice. If you know you need to draw four feet off of a particular surface, let's say I have a wall. I'll put a wall right here. And if I want to draw a detail line that is four feet off the edge of that wall, I can select an offset of four feet. And now I can just draw on that wall and get that line offset four feet. And we can confirm that's four feet if I dimension right there, there's my four feet. Go back to detail line and I can even have a radius. I can choose a radius of one foot in this case. And if I choose that, it doesn't do anything. And why does it not do anything? Well, it doesn't do anything because I haven't, I'm drawing a straight line. I, there's no radius involved with the straight line there. And if I stop drawing, select the line, there's no radius, there's nothing involved with that. But if I draw a detail line for a circle or an arc or anything that has a curve, I can put that radius in, let's say I have that five feet, and I already have that five foot radius circle right there. Same with this arc, I actually, don't even have the option of choosing the radius in this. But after I draw the arc, I have an option of changing that radius myself. So now I can change that to five feet. A lot of times what I do, if I want a specific radius, I would just go ahead and select the circle, choose my radius. And then now I've got that circle right there. And I can always split that circle if I need it to be a specific arc. I could split it in a couple places and now I've got an arc just like that. And I can adjust that as needed. So I'll clear these out and let's, let's go to the different types of lines. I can draw a line, which is what I've been doing the whole time. I can draw a rectangle, which is just going to give me a start and end point and I'm going to get a rectangle. They're each their own line. That's great. Pretty simple. I can choose uh, a polygon and I can determine the number of sides. And I, again, I can give it an offset, anything like that, that I want to it. And there we go. I've got my perfect octagon right there with all the, the line lengths the same. That's pretty easy. I've got a circumscribed polygon, 
which is basically I'm starting from the center. Again, I choose the eight, eight sides. I choose the center, and now I'm determining the radius. This works the same. The radius tool works nicely here because now I can just determine the number of sides, and then I can just place that wherever I want and give it a rotation. Perfect. Go back to detail line once again, and again, we show the circle, and then the start and end arc. So the start and end arc is saying, hey, where do you want to start and end? I want to start the arc there, end the arc there, and then I can determine a radius. And from there, I can input my own value, and works perfectly right there. The center end arc, not a difficult tool to use, but now let's say I've got a couple of lines here. Typically these would be at 90 degrees, and I can choose detail line, and now I'm prompted to choose two endpoints. This endpoint works, and then that endpoint works, and now I'm drawing the arc around that point. So the, you'll actually start, as you see there, the icon shows this little plus sign at the the center of those points. So if I, using these uh, these temporary dimensions, these lines that show me where the intersection of these two lines are or would be, I can start there from the radius and choose this point and then arc around to that point and give me that line just like that. I don't use that a lot because it is kind of confusing. It's not all that necessary and a lot of times what I would use is the fillet right here. So let's let's draw these as a corner just like that and I can go back to detail line, go to fillet right there, determine a radius if I want. If not, I can just select this line, that line, and now I have that fillet just like that. Really nice, really simple. It's gonna even cut it for me and now I can once again give it a radius which is exactly what I want. I can also, to do this once again, Go to detail lines, fillet, and I can determine that radius off the bat as five feet, and I can just select each side and I get my five foot radius just like that very simply. And go back to detail line once more, and using this tangent end arc, we can create a curve that connects to the end of, the, of these existing lines. So it's kind of like what we've done before. I'll pull these apart, and now let's see if we can get something that looks a little better, a little quicker. So I can choose that end point, and now it's it's drawing an arc that's a little more free formed. And then I can choose this other endpoint, and now I've got this nice arc that connects these points. Very simply. <laughs> then I've got a spline, and a spline does not have any hard edges in it. And I, I can't say that I use splines a lot because Revit doesn't like splines, as putting it lightly. You can't do as much with splines as you can with other typical lines just because of the nature of the spline and what it is. For example, I can't change the endpoints very easily, whereas I can move these intermediate points very easily. The endpoint, if I just drag it, it's going to change the scale, placement, and everything of every other item, every other point along the spline. So I don't typically use that. Now, you actually can offset splines. You can copy them and do things like that, but they're pretty set in their ways, which is why I tend to not use them. Going back to detail, we have the option to choose an ellipse. I get the inter, uh, the center point, I choose the length, and then I choose the width right there. Very simple. I can determine these dimensions after using the temporary dimensions. I have some more options over here, hiding uh, center mark, whether that's visible or not. I can see that right there. Focus marks visible, just like that. These end focus marks there at the end. I don't typically show those. I also don't use this tool, or this part of the tool that all that much. Go back to the detail lines one more time, and partial ellipse. So it's basically the same thing we just did, but just partially. So I'm, I'm doing a half of an ellipse at that point. I'm giving the length there, and then the width, and there's my half an ellipse. It works just the same. And then finally, pick lines, which is great. I use pick lines quite a lot, and I probably use that just as much as drawing basic lines, but I'll draw some walls out here, and maybe I want to pick these lines. Maybe I want to just show these, or maybe I want to put lines on top of these walls. That's probably what I'm using the, the pick line tool. It's basically picking lines that you see on the screen. So I have the option of choosing the, end, the edges of the wall, the center, 
interior exterior edges it's all the same so I can actually click and add my line there or I can tab to where I get all four walls and so you can see I had all four of those center points together because those walls are joined I, what's left is all of those four lines right there that's a quick rundown of the detail line tool itself so where do you use this well you can actually only use detail lines in 2d views and 2d views being anything that's not 3d I know that's that's obvious it makes sense but you'll know you're in a 2d view if you have the option of drawing detail lines or using a, a good number of these detail options up here in the annotation tab but right now because I'm in a level one floor plan view I have the option of doing that if I go to just the default 3D view, there's my wall, and I actually don't have the option of drawing these lines at all. I can't draw detail lines, use regions, or even detail components because it's a 3D view. They will not work in 3D. And that, that's too bad, but it's just the way it is. It's meant for 2D views. Imagine that. I'm actually going to go to a sheet. And so while detail lines work in views that are 2D, I can actually place detail lines directly on a sheet. There no line, or there's no views here, and I can just draw detail lines on the sheet if I need to. I don't know why you necessarily want to. I don't quite advise that. I'd probably put everything you need to in views that are on the sheet rather than on the sheet itself, but there are reasons. There are reasons you can do that. It's a 2D view, it's a sheet, so it does work that way. In the next video, I'll cover model lines, which are very similar and basically act the same way as detail lines except you can use them in 3D. That's great. So be sure to stick around for the next video for that. If you enjoyed this video, please demolish that like button. It always helps. Please subscribe too. I can't thank all of you enough who have subscribed. It really means a lot and I can't thank you enough for sticking around and watching all these videos. I hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day.